The oral cavity or mouth represents the first part of the digestive tube. Anatomically speaking, it is separated into two parts, the oral vestibule and the oral cavity proper. We will take a look at the oral vestibule and the oral cavity proper and all structures of the oral cavity by drawing the sections of the oral cavity from three different angles. First, let me here draw the anterior view. Talking about the borders, it is important to know that the oral cavity is bound by both lips anteriorly, the cheeks laterally, the floor of the mouth and mobile tongue inferiorly, the oral pharynx posteriorly, and a heart and a soft palate superiorly. The vestibule is situated anteriorly right here. It is the space situated between the cheeks and lips and here the teeth. In more technical terms, the vestibule is the space which is bound externally by the lips and the cheek mucosa and internally by the gums and the teeth. It extends up to the intermaxillary commissure where both vestibules meet together. Returning to our previous diagram, it is important to note that the floor of the mouth is connected to the tongue by the fold of oral mucosa which is known as the lingual frenulum. The little bridle of the lower lip over here is called the inferior label frenulum. It is also presented in the upper lip and is called superior labial frenulum. In a clinical practice, sometimes the babies are born with a defect of the labial frenulum, which is called the lip tie. It is characterized by an abnormally short and thick frenulum causes problems with the breastfeeding of the infant. Well, as for the mouth proper, it lies posteriorly to the vestibule. In order to clearly show its relation with the vestibule, let me draw here another diagram from the side. The mouth proper is bordered by the hot and soft pellets superiorly, a flow of the mouth with the mobile tongue inferiorly, and a teeth with the gums laterally and anteriorly, and the oral pharynx posteriorly. The tongue, which is a muscular structure, fills a large portion of the cavity of the mouth proper. Sometimes the tongue it may become even larger in case of macroglossia. This condition usually occurs in children and may be caused by a wide variety of congenital defects and acquired conditions. Severe enlargement of the tongue or macroglossia can cause functional difficulties in speaking, eating, swallowing, and sleeping. Returning to the anterior view of the mouth, we need to make a couple of additional points about the structures which are not actually part of the oral cavity, like the palatine tonsils and the uvular, but having some clinical relevance which is important to be noted. In the lateral sides of the oral pharynx, you may see the palatine tonsils here, which are the part of the immune system. Sometimes they inflame, causing tonsillitis. Inflamed tonsils appear red and swollen, and also not rare, they may have white or yellow spots. Symptoms include a sore throat, swollen and red tonsils. Now, let me draw here the view of the oral cavity from the side and make some additional points, especially about the surrounded organs and structures. Here is the oral cavity proper and over here superior 
and inferior lip. Right here is your ton, palatine tonsil. Talking about the surrounded structures, over here is the nasal cavity, which is separated from the oral cavity by the hard and soft palates. The soft palate terminates and adjoins to uvula. Here is your nasal pharynx, where the entrance to the auditory tube is located. Posteriorly and inferiorly to the oral cavity is oral pharynx. Right here is your epiglottis, which closes the trachea when you eat some meal and prevents the bowels to enter to the respiratory passages. The oral pharynx further adjoins to the laryngeal pharynx. The other important structures which are in close relation with the oral cavity are the salivary glands. It is extremely important to know that the major salivary glands, the parotid, the submandibular, and the sublingual glands ducts open within the oral cavity structures, but remember they are not part of the oral cavity. In addition to them, the oral cavity is rich in its own minor salivary glands. Now, finally, let me draw here the anterolateral view of the mouth to clearly show and define some functions of the structures which I have mentioned above. So, here we have the lips, whose principal function in humans is associated with the speech and also serve at the entrance to the oral cavity. The size and opening of the oral cavity is controlled by circumoral muscles, such as orbicularis oris, vaccinators, elevators, and depressors of lips. In a clinical practice, sometimes the corner of the mouth where both lips meet together inflames and causes angular chylitis, also known as angular stomatitis. Angular stomatitis often represents an opportunistic infection of fungi or bacteria and is characterized by noticeable blisters at one or both corners of your mouth, very noticeable discomfort with eating, talking, opening and closing your mouth. So here we have the tongue, whose primary function is assisting in swallowing food and is also essential in producing speech. Aside the tongue are your cheeks which form the lateral walls of the oral cavity. They consist of inner mucosa, outer layers of skin, subcutaneous fat, facial muscles that assist in manipulating food in the oral cavity. The two common diseases of the oral cavity, leukoplakia and candidiasis thresh, in many cases affect the tongue and cheek mucosa. Both diseases are characterized by analogous white patches. Leukoplakia often may be confused with the oral candidiasis, but the lesion of leukoplakia cannot be rubbed off as would be the case in oral candidiasis. Most cases of leukoplakia and oral candidiasis cause no symptoms, but sometimes there may be discomfort or pain in the oral cavity. So, here are your teeth. They may be considered organs of mastication, uh, in other words, chewing, and also they mix the food with the saliva. The parotid duct openings are better seen here. It opens into the vestibule of the mouth at the parotid papillar, which lies across the second superior molar tooth. The primary function of the mouth is to serve at the entrance of the alimentary tract and to initiate the digestive process by salivation and propulsion of the alimentary bolus into the pharynx. It also serves as a secondary respiratory conduit, a site of sound modification for the production of speech, and a chemosensory organ. Now, we will see what happens in an oral cavity when a person eats some milk. So, as soon as food enters the oral cavity, the process of mastication starts. 
This process involves movements of the muscles of mastication like the masseter, temporalis, the medial pterygoid, and the lateral pterygoid. It also involves the movement of the tongue, lips, and the cheeks as well as the more obvious actions of the teeth and jaws. During the mastication process, the food is positioned by the cheek and tongue between the teeth for grinding. As chewing continues, the food is made softer, warmer, and lubricated. The main salivary enzyme, amylase, begins to break down carbohydrates like starch into maltose and glucose. After chewing, the food, which is now called the bolus, is swallowed 